This is the Britannia. After the Second World War, unfortunately, Britain didn't have any commercial aircraft. They were only focusing on military aircraft during the Second World War. And after the failure of the Brabazon, although it was a commercial failure, the technology behind it was so great, a lot of it went on to help many other aircraft at them. And of course, we now had the assembly fleet over here at Fulton, also known as the Brabazon. So the Britannia was first thought about in the 1950s, in fact 1950 on the dock, and it wasn't until two years later that they actually had a working prototype. And this part of the aircraft here, the nose section, is one of those aircraft who were first flew from Filton. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't all go to plan on its test flight. So at the time, the test pilot, Bill Pegg, he was flying the aircraft around South Wales, showing off to some representatives from KLM, when all of a sudden, one of the engines could fire. Now there are a couple of theories of how this engine could fire. One is due to ice build up in the engine due to the air intakes being designed wrong. And there's another theory of a gearbox which powered the propeller at the front because it was a gas turbine engine. So the best way to describe it is a jet engine with a propeller on the end. Unfortunately this gearbox completely ground all its teeth away so therefore it was just spinning continuously causing friction which then overheated the engine to catch fire. Now unfortunately when this engine caught fire Bill Pegg couldn't make it back to Filton so what he had to do was land on the mud flats just by little to the pond seven just up past the original seven bridge and luckily he knew the area very well and he knew he would be able to land the aircraft there. So that was exactly what he did he landed the aircraft on the river seven um, luckily, everyone made it out absolutely fine. There was only one report of an injury on that day, and all that was was a gentleman getting out the emergency hatch at the top of the aircraft and bumped his head. So, after the emergency landing, everyone got out fine, got stuck in the mud a little bit. But of course, as soon as the engine touched the mud, it was completely out of fire and put out immediately. Now, this was one of the early failures of the Britannia, and unfortunately, we cannot mention the Britannia without mentioning the Bowman disaster. So this is where a Britannia aircraft unfortunately lost control. Uh, they believe it to be one of the early autopilot systems locked up, um, causing the Britannia to completely bank right and unfortunately come to rest in a wooded area um, just around the local area. And officially now it's named as Britannia Woods because of the aircraft and you can still go visit it even today. There are a couple of flats around the area so unfortunately, back then you had to fly aircraft in order to test them. We didn't have any simulators like we do today, so therefore we had to get in and fly. The Britannia was a successful aircraft, uh, although only 85 were ever built in total, but that's because we didn't have the mass production facility over here in Filton like Boeing did over in America. Nevertheless, it wasn't a failure because although only a small number were built, um, they did go into transport command. We have a model just out here of the transport command. And they were very successful. They used them for many years from the late 60s all the way up to the late 70s. And it was around about 75, 76 when the transport command decided to get rid of their Britannia fleet. And it wasn't the end for Britannias because they were bought by a lot of smaller companies, um, a lot of cargo companies and passenger, com passenger companies, and indeed uh, quite a few of them went over to Cuba. Cuba was the last country to use them as a commercial aircraft. There was even one used as a safari aircraft, so it would fly over the African plains, so you could take pictures from above of all the animals. Of course, it wouldn't be too bad, but now the animals were scared of planes as well as cars driving around their lands. It wasn't all bad though because the plane was a lot quieter, that's why it also has the nickname the Whispering Giant. It was due to this new gas turbine engine and that allowed it to be a lot quieter than most other piston engines. The last Britannia to fly was in 1997 when it returned back here from South Africa and there's a funny story to go along with that. It was either here at Filtered Airfield or at Kemble where the pilot, when he was coming into land, 
he did a fly low pass over the airfield and a lot of people were wondering why and that was because when he was over in South Africa that was a the thing they had to do, they had to low fly pass over the airfield to scare all the animals away so apart from scaring a couple of rabbits and foxes over here in Britain um, he did get a telling off after he landed but of course he forgot where he was he was so used to fly them over in South Africa we have forgotten back here in Britain to do that. So that's a nice little story to go with it.